So a couple years ago, I was doing research in Iceland, and one day this guy knocks on my door and he asks me if I want to see something, and I say yes. So we drive for an hour and we get out and we put on harnesses and helmets and crampons, and we hike across a local glacier to a moulin, a hole in the surface ice, and we climb down and we wait. And one minute it's dark, and the next minute it's not. The sky it starts to blaze with the northern lights, the aurora borealis, and the glacier glows, refracts light like a chandelier, and we're enveloped above and below with light and ice. Incredible, <laughs> unforgettable. This moment for it's a part of who I am. It's unforgettable. It's also. Part of a growing realization that glaciers influence people just as much as people influence glaciers. Today, we have over 400,000 glaciers, ice fields, ice sheets, valley glaciers, tidewater glaciers, Piedmont glaciers, glacierets. Rock glaciers. That's a glacier. We have glaciers growing worldwide in the Arctic, Antarctica, in the Middle East, in Central Africa, along the equator, and everywhere each glacier grows, it grows within inhabited and historic environments. Where there are glaciers, there are people. And the two have been influencing each other for the entirety of human history. But today, we know very little about people and ice, because in science we have continuously separated the two. Glaciology today largely focuses on measuring and predicting ice, on the physics and chemistry of a glacier, and this gives us valuable information, like ice mass recession rates. But it has also contributed to glaciers today being. Isolated, isolated from people, from environments, from socio-political, cultural processes. What we need today is a more inclusive, whole-picture approach where we understand people and ice as integrated environmental communities. Because if we want to understand and respond to what is happening to our world today, to us and this planet we live on, as our ice is melting. We need to start looking for the whole picture. For example, in Iceland, the whole picture shows us how disappearing ice transforms cultural identity. Young Icelanders, they ask, "Can I be an Icelander if my ice is gone?" Or how disappearing ice generates economic stability through glacier tourism? Or how older Icelanders feel safer as the ice recedes because it can no longer flood? Or surge over their homes, or how glacier change challenges boundaries. What do you do when the property line for your farm, or your national park, or the barrier separating your flocks of sheep disappears? This, this is happening across the cryosphere. In India and Pakistan, villages with climate change exacerbated water shortages are reviving centuries-old glacier breeding practices. They're making brand new glaciers to supply agricultural water throughout the dry season. When we look at people and ice together, through different times and scales and geographies, we start to see immense glacier diversity influencing immense human diversity. We start to get a whole new picture of our history. Our adaptability and our future. Thank you very much.